So as Paul's already said, the subject, subject tonight is the age of the earth. And we're going to look at some of the evidence for a young earth. And we're going to cover quite a lot of different topics. We're going to start with a bit of biology. We're going to do a bit of astronomy. We're going to do some chemistry. We're going to look at history, ancient history. And we're going to look at geology. Of course, you can't address the question of the age of the earth without looking at geology. We'll save the best to last. Um, before we start, though, why are we actually talking about this subject? Why is there a debate about the age of the earth? Well, for a Christian, the debate arises because of what we read in the Bible. And here's Genesis chapter 1, verse 5. And we read here in the creation account in Genesis chapter 1, God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was an evening, there was a morning, the first day. And that's, a, that's the end of the first day of creation as recorded in Genesis. And there are a number of days of creation, as you know, six days of creation recorded in Genesis. And this phrase reappears every time. And as another mention of the word day in Genesis 1 chapter 14, talking about God saying, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons, for days and years. So we have an idea of time in the first chapter of the book of the Bible. And what we need to know is what do, this, what do these days mean? Because if uh, the current scientific uh, theories are correct, the Earth is actually billions of years old and life evolved over a long period of time. And it's not, not something that happened on a number of days, six days, uh, as the Bible says. But maybe we don't understand correctly what the Bible is saying. Maybe there's, there's some misunderstanding in the word day. Well, I want to quote to you a professor... Barr, who uh, was Regis Professor of Hebrew at Oxford University, is now retired, but he, he wrote in reply to a question sent to him by somebody who was look, researching this subject and wanted to know what did actually the text of the Bible say. Does it actually say days or 24 hours, or does it, is it more open to different interpretations? And this is what he said. The writers of Genesis intended to convey to their readers the idea that creation took place in a series of six days, which were the same as the days of 24 hours that we now experience. So he's actually saying, well, by the way, all these efforts of various people who are trying to say, well, actually, it's not days of 24 hours. Their, their efforts are uh, kind of uh, stillborn because as far as the text is concerned, as far as the language is concerned, as far as the Hebrew language is concerned, it means six days of 24 hours. Interestingly, Professor Barr then goes on to say, "Because, but we now know that's not true. So he, although he admits that's what it says, he says, I don't believe it, because science has told me that the Earth is actually billions of years old, therefore it can't be true. But that's what it says. Or you can take the alternative approach, which is one I take, is that, well, if that's what God said, maybe we should take it quite seriously. But then we are confronted, of course, with the scientific uh, counter-argument. So let's look at some of the science. As a scientist, who is also a Christian, I'm not afraid to look at the science, so we start looking at the science. Let's look at biology to start with. A couple of pieces of evidence from biology which support the idea that the Earth actually might be quite young. We can look at human population growth, and we're also going to look at human skeletons. Well, we're not actually going to look at human skeletons. We're going to think about human skeletons and human tombs. Growth rates first, though. Human population growth... It's, it's an interesting question to ask is, how long would it take for this Earth to have six billion people on it? We now have six billion people on this Earth. Would that take a long time? Would that take a short time? How long would it actually take? Well, present population, as I've already said, is six billion, and the present growth rate well, over recent years is about 2% per year, an increase of about 2% per year. It might actually be slowing down now. But that's a fairly slow growth rate. But if that growth rate, say, has been constant over a period of time, how long would it take if we started with two people to get to six million people? Anybody fancy a guess? Come on, be brave. Six thousand years. <laughs> Too long. <laughs> it's actually only about 1,100 years to get from two people to six billion at a growth rate of 2%. Uh, and that's a fairly modest growth rate. So actually there's plenty of time to reach the population of the Earth starting just from two people uh, and that's not a problem from that point of view. And the question really we have to ask is why hu the humanity has not filled the Earth a lot quicker than we currently have if we've been on this planet for a, 
the conservative estimates would say that human beings have been around, if you're an evolutionist, for about 100,000 years. So why have we not already filled the planet several times over? Uh, maybe because we haven't been around that long to fill the planet several times over. And just to su kind of support that argument, let's think about human skeletons. They're, from time to time, uh, archaeologists and paleontologists dig up a human skeleton, a human fossil, uh, or a fossil that might be uh, quite human-like. Um, it would be interesting to think about, well, how many should there be? Now, we're told, according to the evolutionists again, that Stone Age lasted about 100,000 years. Okay, just look, taking the evolutionary side of the argument. So the question is, where are all the bodies? Because if you had a population of about 1 to 10 million individuals, which is not very many, it's a fairly conservative estimate, living on this planet for about 100,000 years, you can actually work out how many dead bodies there should be around, how many graves you would find. Now, assuming also that human beings, one of the, one of the features of humanity is that we tend to bury our dead rather than just dispose of them in the dustbin. So you find graves and you find artifacts. So... Taking those assumptions, actually, it, the maths comes out with about 4 billion people would have died in that 100,000 years. So the question is, where are all the tombs? Because if you actually work it out, if you take, uh, start calculating the surface area of uh, the, the land on this planet, you will find that if you take um, Europe, Asia, Africa, North and South America, um, you end up with... with a density of about um, 80 bodies per square mile. So you'd expect to find tombs of 80 people in every square mile of land surface on this planet, if these numbers are correct. So the question is, where are they all? Well, maybe they weren't that many people for that long period of time. So two pieces of evidence from biology which suggest actually that the Earth could be a lot younger than we're told. Some of these numbers don't add up. Somewhere something's wrong. Now let's move to astronomy. I'm a bit of an amateur astronomer. I, I have my telescope. I get it out from time to time. I was out the other night looking at Saturn, uh, enjoying the view. But astronomy is an interesting subject. And we're going to look at this, we're going to look, think about solar eclipses. We're going to think about comets. We're going to have a look at the what's called the faint sun paradox. All of these three things actually suggest that the uh, the standard story about the Earth being billions of years old doesn't, doesn't quite work. Solar eclipses. The moon, as you no doubt know, is 400 times smaller than the sun. It also happens to be 400 times closer to us than the sun is when it's between the Earth and the sun. Because on its the other side, it's a bit further away. But when, it, when the moon goes passes between the Earth and the sun or is between the Earth and the Sun, it's actually 400 times closer. 400 times smaller, 400 times closer. So it actually has the same apparent diameter, which gives you a total solar eclipse. And the other thing about the Moon is, it's actually receding uh, from the Earth. It's getting further away. So in about 20 or 30 million years, we won't be able to observe these amazing phenomena of a, of a total solar eclipse. So you might say, well, so what? Well, hang on, let's think about this. 20 to 30 million years, geologically speaking, when you're talking about billions, that's nothing. Okay? We just happen to be here to observe a total solar eclipse when it happens to be occurring. 20 million years either way, we need to be too early or too late on the scene. And as I say, when you're talking about billions of years of evolution, why do we actually happen to be here at this particular time? Just coincidence that we see solar eclipses. And not to, meant, not to forget also that... The fact that the moon is the right size in the right place in rel relative to the sun and the earth actually caused a solar eclipse to occur. So many people think there's rather too many coincidences. I tend to think that's rather too many coincidences. So maybe we're, <coughs> we're on this earth at this time <coughs> to observe a solar eclipse because God meant us to be here to observe solar eclipses. And in fact, the universe is quite young and it's, we've always been able to observe a solar eclipse throughout the whole history of the earth. Could somebody get me a glass of water, please? <coughs> Thank you. So... Solar eclipses is a rather interesting phenomenon and that do suggest that maybe we've been, we're here at the right geological epoch, which is a rather amazing coincidence if the Earth is billions of years old. Comets. Comets are very interesting objects. I don't know whether any of you observed the, the recent comet that was actually visible from the skies of Edinburgh last year, October time. If you had a pair of binoculars, you could actually see it from Edinburgh. If you were outside of Edinburgh and you didn't have light pollution, you could actually see it with the naked eye. But long-period comets are very...